I want to get back into our housing check-in. We, we haven't touched on that in a while. And several subscribers are kind of asking about Open Door. It's a show favorite. It's one of your favorites. Uh, can you update yep. us on the housing market and also uh, Open Door specifically? Is there anything new going on uh, there? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay, so sorry. Let me try and do this again. Do, 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 do. I got another chart for you guys. Like I said, chart heavy show. Chart heavy show. Mm-hmm. We love the charts. We love the charts. Let me see. This is a very low quality. I don't know how the the quality got all mixed <laughs> up, but let, let's go ahead and do that. Yeah. So everyone's worried about the housing market. Everyone's freaking out. And I get it. You know, home prices are high. People can't afford it. I get mm-hmm. it. But let's look at this chart to get some context. Okay. You got it on your screen, Aaron. Yep. Looking good. Okay. This graphs the year-over-year increase in home prices every single month, okay? Okay. Back right. to 19, the 1960s, back to 1960, basically. Okay. There have only been, in 60 years, mm-hmm. four periods of home price contraction, like sustainable okay. home price contraction. Mm-hmm. You had it here. In the late 60s mm-hmm. into the early 70s, very brief. Yep. You had it here in the early 1990s, very mm-hmm. brief. You had it here in 08, which was messy and nasty. Mm-hmm. And you had it here briefly in late 2018. Okay? okay? So you have it four times in 60 years. The average decline is 11% over 20 months. You exclude the 2008 nastiness and it's 8% over 18 months. Okay. So that is some important context for this market. Home prices do go up over time. The okay. second chart I want to show you here, uh, I think may be just as important. Are we seeing it, Aaron? Uh, yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. These periods of declines usually are very well – like. The housing market moves very slowly. It's not – houses are not like stocks. It's not a super mm-hmm. liquid market where we can drop 10% one day, drop 20% in, in, in six months. Like That's not how home prices work. They move mm-hmm. – like if the stock market is the hare, then the housing market is the turtle. Okay. Okay. It moved very slowly, step mm-hmm. by step by step. We're talking like a percent of decline a month, so very, mm-hmm. very slowly. As a result of that, you normally do not get super strong home price appreciation periods going into negative growth. As you can see here, you had throughout the 70s, because of inflation mostly, you had super strong HPA, 12%, 13%, up to 20% a couple years. That didn't go negative. It went to flat growth. Home prices went flat. They went, what, down 0.2% for one month here, and then they just Mm – you didn't get this super strong home price appreciation – did not go to negative growth. Mm -hmm. Here, you have another period of really strong home price appreciation. It took Mm -hmm. three full years to go from 15% plus growth to negative growth. Three years to do that. Mm -hmm. Here, you had another, you know, up to 15% HPA, a great, really strong HPA. It took two full years for home prices to go negative. Two years. Here, another brief period of very strong HPA. Home prices didn't go negative until, Mm -hmm. what, nine years later? Mm -hmm. We're here right now. We're here with home price appreciation. It would be absolutely unprecedented for this housing market, for this chart to all of a sudden go from here to red right here. Mm -hmm. It would not be unprecedented to submit to go here to red within three or four years. Mm -hmm. That's two or three years. That's what normally happens, but not within two or three months. No way. That's that's not how the housing market works. It doesn't move that quickly. It moves very very slowly. So from that perspective, Aaron, I think that housing market slowdown concerns are a bit overstated at the current moment. I mm-hmm. think that when you look at the fundamentals of housing, demand is a proven durable thing even through recessions. That mm-hmm. these periods of HPA declines were not driven by demand falling out. They were driven by too much supply on the market. 
they were driven by the fact that there was a lot of supply with a lot of demand, and then all of a sudden demand weakened a little bit, and the supply was really high, and so prices went down. We've never seen a period where supply was low and prices decreased. It doesn't happen because demand for homes is a durable thing of the U.S. economy. So as a result of that, I do not think that home prices can decline considerably or even at all um, in this current period because supply is so low. Supply Mm -hmm. is so low. And where is new supply going to come from? Well, every Mm -hmm. current home seller, unless you're selling a second home, becomes a buyer. So it's not coming from current home sellers. New Mm -hmm. supply comes from the builders. And the builders, their confidence is dropping. Their starts are dropping. Their permits are dropping. Their costs of construction are going up. And when they do finish those homes, they spend so much money acquiring them. I don't know if I have a lot of friends that are in the market looking for homes. They're Mm -hmm. telling us, we're seeing in surveys, home builders are not cutting their prices. They are doing everything except that. They're throwing every incentive in the book that they can think of, dreaming of random incentives to get people (laughs) to buy the home without cutting the price. So Mm -hmm. home builders are standing very firm on home prices right now. The new supply coming into the market is not cutting. Well, we're also reading what I'm hearing from agents is that the people who are selling their homes, they're very hesitant to cut prices, very hesitant. Mm -hmm. There have been some price drops, but they're very hesitant to do so. And Mm -hmm. in the event that they do have to drop it considerably, they're just not selling their home. They're coming back. They're coming out of the market. So I think the dynamics are such right now that supply is still very constrained. People don't want to cut prices. Home builders don't want to cut prices. Um, Mortgage rates, I think, are about to collapse. Mortgage rates really were ahead of the Fed. Um, just like the Treasury, uh, U.S. Treasuries, you've seen the 10-year Treasury yield. It's collapsed from 3.5 to 2.8 in about a week and a half. Mortgage mm-hmm. rates are going to start peeling back pretty big. They peeled back a little bit already. I think they're going to peel back pretty big. I think we finished the year below 5% on, on a 30-year fixed mortgage rate. So I think that what we had was this temporary freakout period that is causing a lot of people to freak out about home prices. But at the end of the day, once the dust settles, this too shall pass. And it's going to pass without impacting home prices all that much well we maybe mm-hmm. see a brief decline of three to six months sure totally possible but it's not going to last that long and it's not going to be that big and then post all this noise home prices are going to go back to rising and doing what they normally do up three four five percent a year that's just what they're going to do for the next 10 years 20 years 30 years so talking about open door why does this not matter for open door open door mm-hmm. sells homes over a 90 day period they buy a home mm-hmm. they sell it 90 days later okay so we said that even in the worst declines in history home prices yeah. only drop about a percent a month right mm-hmm. so open door sells a home they get five percent on that they get the five percent commission okay mm-hmm. so they've already got the five percent gross margin there let's say they just completely miscalculated and mm-hmm. they're not yeah. underbuying and then overselling. They're just they're buying at a market price and they're selling at a market price. So let's just say the pricing algorithms suck, which is not true. Then that means <laughs> that if you go to the worst housing market of all time, they take five uh-huh. percent on their commission. They lose yeah. a percent in the first thirty days, a percent in the next thirty days, and a percent in the next thirty days. So they lose three mm-hmm. percent over three months. They sell the home at a three percent loss. They got the five percent commission. Five minus three is two. They sold a two percent gross margin. Yeah. So there's still a positive gross margin business, even if their pricing algorithms absolutely are terrible. Mm -hmm. And they have the capacity to reduce their their cost basis to maintain EBITDA EBITDA profitability, even if gross margins fall to 2%. We saw that with COVID-19, how quickly they can pivot in the event Mm -hmm. that the housing market does just completely evaporate or or completely go to, um, you know, get blown to bits. But that's not going to happen. We know that yeah. Open Doors house, house pricing algorithms are actually very good. They're designed by some very smart people. Um, I've interacted with them on, on, a, on a customer basis. I know that these algorithms are very good. So from mm-hmm. that perspective, I don't think it's possible that these guys lose 3% in, thir- in 90 days. I think at most, even in a down market, they lose 1% to 2%. And I actually think they're going to make money on a lot of these homes. So now you're talking anywhere on the order of 4% to 6%, 7%, 8% gross margins, at which point the cost basis is at a level where they should be able to get 3 4 5% EBITDA margins. And that is not priced into the stock at all. So I, for one, am very confident in the open door model. I think the reason the market is so hesitant on is because the market's never seen a company like this. Just like mm-hmm. the market never 
company like Amazon back in 2002 when it yeah. was a sub five dollar stock back then as well. Remember, um, when the market <laughs> hasn't seen a business before, Wall Street yeah. is a giant consensus algorithm. I get that, but Wall mm-hmm. Street's consensus is a byproduct of its previous learnings. Okay. There is not a lot of creativity in Wall Street analysis. Mm-hmm. I will be the first to, to say that. There is a yeah. serious dearth of creativity. There's a lot of creativity in venture capital analysis, not a lot of creativity in Wall Street analysis. So mm-hmm. Wall Street sees Open Door as a business model they've never seen before that mm-hmm. could fail yeah. if the pricing algorithms aren't right and they assume the worst. Yeah. But if you think creatively about the business and understand that the pricing algorithms are actually very good, and that the housing market moves very slowly, then Mm -hmm. you'll understand that Open Door will, even if there is a housing market downturn, which I don't think there will be, will survive Mm -hmm. that storm, come out on the other side of very successful business. I mean, the company is rapidly expanding right now. Mm -hmm. That has to say something. This company is not run by idiots. It's run by some very smart people. Compass, cutting employees. Redfin, cutting employees. Zillow, pulled out of iBuying. Open Door, Mm -hmm. just expanded into four new markets. Mm-hmm. I think that speaks for itself. I think that honestly <laughs> speaks for itself that you have a company that is so confident in itself at this point in time that it mm-hmm. is expanding to new markets when all of its competitors are firing people. Either they are brazen idiots or they're about to dominate this market in a way that nobody sees coming. And that's mm-hmm. what I think happened. So I really, I'm super bullish and open door always have been and always what will continue to be the market price action means nothing to me at this point in time i think that this is a long-term significant winner uh by 2025 2026 2027 i this company is is a fabulous company thanks for watching hgi clips for the full episode head on over to our sister channel at hyper growth investing by clicking the link in the description or listen to the podcast on any of your favorite streaming platforms we make new episodes every wednesday so make sure to check it out and subscribe to never miss any of luke's hyper growth insights 